hello and welcome back we are looking at the palm sunday reading today so this version that's done in my bible this is the um use for christ uh, and bible society bible um has been done with acrylic paint through a stencil we're going to use the same stencil um stencils but we're going to use watercolor pencils or uh, not pencils watercolor markers to do the same effect uh, in a slightly different way this gathering wreath is the next video but i've done the next video with acrylics and i will do a speed show you the speed paint of how i did this one as well but that's why this week i'm going to do um a more explained version so the book i'm working in is this one the bible journey made simple book and the pages are um bible style pages and this page here i've already prepped with uh, gesso so this is art basics gesso um, it's nice and smooth and it means that nothing will go through your page so if you look at this gathering wreath we might not see it a little bit's gone through but that's because i didn't prep it particularly well um but yeah and as you might be able to hear from my voice i've got a little bit of a cold so you know it is what it is so i'm sorry so um we're going to put the light colored leaves in. so i've already auditioned some colors down here check them so you could do that in the front part of your bible and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a very very light outline with a pencil of the leaf shape that i want to do Now you could do this equally with a watercolour pencil, so I'll show you the difference in a minute and what it looks like, so you can make the choice yourself. This is a 2H pencil, so it's quite a light mark, but with gesso it's got more of a key, so it comes out a bit bolder. So I'll do that one with a pencil, then I'm going to grab a, a watercolour pencil in a light colour and do the same idea but I'm going to do it with this so what will happen is the outline will disappear with water now this isn't sharpened very well but you'll get the idea I do apologize for this cold So there we are. So what I've done off camera is I've just got another um, green, and because this stencil is quite narrow, I've just put in one mark in each one of this, these ones. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my watercolor pencil. Uh, so these are Jaws water-based. Uh, markers these happen to be coy ones but you use what you have and I'm just going to colour in quite lightly and loosely the shapes now you'll see the difference in a minute between using a pencil and using now you don't even have to fill all the gap in I'm just putting some because once we put, add water to it then you'll see the difference already I bet you can see actually the impact not having a black outline is going to have on this and it's up to you what you want yours to look like but I'm giving you the options so I'm going to get my water pot and a brush piece of uh, kitchen roll so all I want to do is activate it so it looks a little bit watercolory like so the more water you add the more watercolory it will look like so I'm going for quite a loose Look, I've been brave and I've added a bit more water. Like so. And then here 
as you can see as I release it activate it you always go and see that pencil line now if you somebody who likes borders around your work then do it like that and then I'm going to grab the heat tool and just give it a quick blast I quite like it when it puddles like that. I don't know if you can see it lift up a little bit more. So when it no focus when it puddles like that. I quite like it, I quite like the effect. Uh, so I'm gonna grab the I can't remember which one it was I liked now. That's a grey, so it must be this. So with this one, these are um zig clear colour brush markers they're lovely really expensive um, and what I want is I want the dark one to be on top of the light one because we're going for a watercolour look I'm not being too precious about it how it looks as I do this bit because the magic will happen when I add um, the water now these zig markers are really pigmented so same as the koi ones so I'm working once my everything's wet I'm working from the inside out I'm just got a little bit in there because this one will end up joining up because the nature of the kind of leaf it is so all I'm doing is activating and if you notice I've not actually put my paintbrush back into The water yet because my paintbrush is full of this luscious luscious pigment now I used to get into trouble in art classes for using my paintbrush as a pencil but that's just the way I roll so again I like it really watercolory so I don't mind if I'm going back in to add where it's going to, they call it blooming, and add some extra leaves, some extra texture to it. And because I use the watercolour <coughs> pencil, there's no outline around these things at all. Right, so what I've chosen to do the crown with, searching how quickly, so there's a crown sensor in the kit, and it needs to be something that will go over the pen. So these are acrylic metallic markers by STA. These particular ones came from Amazon. Now, if you're not very good at holding the stencil still, what you could do is you could grab a little bit of washi tape and just pop it down there. As long as you don't apply water to your washi tape, uh, heat to your washi tape, you'll be fine. So, because this is uh, acrylic based, it should go over the top of everything that's already there. So I'm just going to make sure I don't heat the washi tape and just heat and dry off. Nice. I'm going to give it another coat. 
bricks. I want it to be really bold. So on top again. Now this original one, that was gold paint. But I had to paint it white first. I had to paint it white first so that the gold stood out. And the white, uh, I think I might have used white gesso um, to cover it. So, pull this off. It doesn't rip. There are a few bits that just want to tidy up. Just heat those last few bits. Right, so because I'm using um, a gessoed page, and you see a lot of things going through, um, I can use this uh, right on all permanent pen because it won't go through. But you could equally use a, a um, artist black pen, like a, a micron pen, or my particular favourite, and they're a little bit cheaper, are the um, uni pin pens. But you, also, you could use a Faber Castell one. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some lines down here. And then I'm going to little, put a little bit of the shadow. So the shadow is watercolour pen here. I'm going to activate that in a minute. But I've just noticed I didn't do a very good job just here. Let's so fill it back in after. Yeah. And now with my... kind of look like a shadow. So what I don't want is absolutely loads of puddles here. I'm going to take quite a lot of it off. I'm going to have another go. I think I just put too much pigment and too much water. Too much of everything. I add a bit more pigment I think. And there we are. So you can see the difference between having an outline and not having an outline. Now you could take a pen and outline that um, if you wanted to and all of these but I quite like them um, quite soft like that. So if you take a look at the gather wreath that's been done in the same way as so each individual leaf was drawn and then the then the um, the veins were put in with watercolour pencil. So just to put the two side by side, we've got the original version that's done with paint, with the same stencils, and then this watercolour version. It's your choice.